Hello, welcome on Owl Control, Tatiana here. Today I'd like to talk about how the pandemic has changed the shape of the alternative controller games world so far. The past year has been incredibly challenging for us, but we're all trying to overcome these challenges through different creative initiatives that I'd like to spotlight in this video. So without further ado, let's dig into it. One of the main goals of most alt-control devs is to bring people together to instigate a sort of physical playfulness, a playful bodily engagement, and also embrace the possibilities offered by playful hardware like making games based on smell and taste. Because of this, most alt-control games are not exactly COVID safe. Like many artists and designers, all control developers had to find ways to keep on doing that while complying to safety measures. From game installation integrating the social distancing constraints to all control games playable at home, here are five ways all control developers have been tackling the issue so far. When it comes to COVID safe device, touchless interactions are often the first thing that comes in mind. Most touchless technologies out there are based on motion tracking and gesture control, but they have much more to offer. For instance, I'm working right now with eye tracking. I wanted to explore the possibilities of this type of interaction for a while and saw this as an opportunity. Some games even use touchless interactions and social distancing as win and lose conditions. But one project particularly struck me for making a smart use of touchless interaction. Crowd is a crowd-controlled game made a few weeks prior to the first worldwide lockdown. The team behind this game adapted it so people could stand at a proper distance from one another, making the experience both about social interactions and compliant with COVID-related safety measures. The second approach most people think of when it comes to interactive device compliant with COVID-related safety measures is foot-operated installations. More and more creators are adapting their previous works for foot-operated interfaces. Some indie labels even made foot-operated interfaces for the games they used to exhibit, mostly by using DDR pads or making their own device with pedals or simple arcade buttons. But some developers started making a brand new work and even managed to bring their creative identity to their foot-operated controllers, like this work in progress wobbling foot controller played with LED strips by Robin Baumgarten, known for its wobbly inputs and LED-only outputs. Or this DIY foot paraded game controller made by Alexander Katao and based on rotation rather than basic triggers. When it comes to making alt control games actually playable on site, there's a third approach way less explored by alt control developers so far that I've called the diegetic integration of safety measures. The only example I can give of this to this day is Fuck It or Fuck Off, an incredible student project in the world of CIA interrogation kind of. In this game, you are supposed to interrogate a captured alien to get intel on an upcoming alien terrorist attack. You can do it with strength or you can do it with love and seduce your prisoner to climax by touching its sensible spots. When you start the experience, the agency staff will give you gloves and a mask to protect yourself during manipulation, kind of like a doctor would, making the mask and gloves wearing a sort of ritual that helps the player to get into the experience. It's a clever integration of safety requirements and I hope to see more of this approach in the near future. For the next two topics, I'm gonna address approaches that enable players to play from home. The first one is remote controlled installations. There's not a lot of projects so far that embrace this approach, but Video Gamo Inc. made some tests a few months ago with a sort of common line interface controlled robotic arm that was very interesting. Personally, I'm trying to adapt my last creation, Love Sphinx, for it to work remotely. 
The game is played with any musical instrument featuring at least two octaves, so the idea is to have the installation on site or even just at my place and people play with their instrument through a live stream. If this interests you, you should have a look at what Indie Maker Syndicate is preparing for their upcoming online Al Control exhibit. And last but not least, there's a fifth option that I didn't mention yet, that is all control games playable from home with hijacked controllers. The idea is to repurpose a standard controller to use it in an uncommon way, or even add daily objects to the mix. I started a game jam on itch.io, the alt control at home, that I plan on doing again later on this year about this topic. Some developers came up with very creative ideas, like a Ludipus tying tie simulation based on a vertically held keyboard. You can also check out my entry for it, Good Soup MF, a game played with an Xbox controller and a pair of chopsticks. If you'd like to participate in an alt control at home jam, I strongly suggest you have a look at the upcoming game jam we organized with the Amaze Festival in March. Subscription is still open up to March 12th. Um, you just have to check the link in the description below to subscribe. So that's all for today. There's obviously much more to say about all control adapting to the pandemic. These are just some projects that I found particularly interesting. Feel free to drop me a comment with your favorite cool COVID safe all control games. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, take care and be playful.